Amen. Relationship, partnership, courtship, friendship. It's very important that we begin to understand the kind of people around us, the people around you. Family, let's share. Somebody needs to hear this. Let's share. The people around you. The people around you. It's very vital for you to understand that the people around you either contribute to your falling or your rising. I normally would tell people, I say, some of the ways, the door to the enemy, the door for the enemy to enter into our life are always with the people around us. And also, the door for God to enter into our life is the people around us. So, the people around us either become a door for the devil or they become a door for God. Again, the people around us either cause us an entry or an exiting. Somebody can enter into your life today and that become your exit door from what you've started. Somebody can enter into your life today that become the entrance door of what you need to start. So the people around you are very important. That is why you must pay a particular attention to the people around you. In the book of First Samuel, we saw God raised his servant David. In the book of Second Samuel, we saw that Absalom, who was a son, to his own father, decided to overthrow his father. He stood by the door for a long time. And for such a time, anybody will come to Israel who is looking for vindication and judgment. His son will tell them that my father is old. I am young. If you guys appoint me, the time went for 40 years. Nobody is coming to the palace. They went to tell David. They said, David, your son is standing by the door. He said, leave him alone. If it is my son, he can't do anything to me. Later did he know that the guy stood there for a long time. After 40 days, the whole nation's heart has been shifted away. Shifted from the King David. Why? Because somebody stood by the gates. There are people standing by your gates who have become the problem of your life. You have allowed some people to stay by the gate. Their purpose is to make sure they divert every good thing coming from coming into the house. Absalom's way of destroying the kingdom of his father was to stand by the gate and make sure that any time anybody will come, he will undermine his own father. Ladies and gentlemen, there are people standing by your gates. Who do you speak to? And there are these two people I want you to check in your life. The first one is Hebrews chapter 2. After the king gave the commandment, the Bible said, and there were midwives who stood by the door. And what the midwives did is to bring a woman to sit on the stool. And the woman will push the baby. If it is a boy, they should kill the boy. If it is a baby, the baby should live. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to let you know that there are demonic midwives and there are godly midwives who are prone to kill. They want to kill your vision. Unless they don't hear what you want to do, they will sabotage it. They will find a way to discourage you. That thing is not going to work. One word releases a venom. It releases a poison to kill what you want to start. There are midwives who stand by your door. The second one are people who stand by your door to divert your people. Let me say this. Most of the times, our churches, there are people who stand by the door of our churches. And those people standing by the door of our churches, what I mean by the door of the church can be an usher, a protocol. It can be um, a singer. Those people, those people, those people are some of them are the cause of the people who don't want to come to church. The way an usher will act towards a member, the way a protocol will talk towards somebody, the way a singer will act, dress, or speak outside. The way those people portray themselves determines how the people are welcomed or how they are not welcomed. So people around you are very important. You have to, you have to pay a specific and particular attention to the people around you. The people around you. If you ask people, why don't you come to church? I don't have a problem with the pastor. I don't have a problem with the, wife, the woman of God. I have a problem with the usher. 
have the problem with the protocols. I have the problem with the singers. I have the problem with the with the with the with the ministers. So the people around you, check them. Check the people. Check them. Because if you don't check the people, you will work in vain. The people around you. It's very important. Today, we have a lot of people who have surrounded us. And then also we have people who are demonic, diabolic, satanic serpents with a spirit of chameleon. This is what they do. They come here and they say, do you know minister so so and so? Do you know what this minister said about you? Sir, I love you sincerely from my heart. I love you from my heart. But you got to be very careful of this minister. This minister don't have you in interest. Be careful. He leaves you then he goes to the other minister. Say, hey, minister. Huh, Papa, do you know what the senior pastor is saying about you? Me, if I were to be you, I'll be very careful. So their spirit and their purpose is this. They plant in the heart of the senior men of God and the ministers, a singer and a leader, one person, that is his way of planting it. Now, the purpose of doing this is that they have received an assignment as a man of God. As you have an assignment to preach, they too have been received. They have received an assignment, evil assignment from the devil. And their purpose is to plant confusion in the church. Plant disturbances in the church. And their purpose is to destroy what you are doing. Then we have these people in the church. Their main reason in the church is to come and sleep with the pastor. Sleep with any man of God. Their purpose is to come and sleep with them. They have a, a sexual problem. So they come in the church, they will sleep with the usher, they will sleep with the singer, they will sleep. They, will sleep. they are either both men or women. The assignment is to sleep. They came there to come and have sex. Their mind is to have sex. Even the preacher is preaching, they still imagine sex. And so they start with that train. They talk to the minister sexually. They call at midnight. And we pray for them. They have, they, have, they have ways of communicating. I want to elect some of us to be very vigilant when it comes to those kind of things. So they will text you things like, my breast is too heavy. I can't, I can't anymore. And they are crying emotionally. They are breast. And then they will even tell you that they want to go and do surgery. And then they will say to you, it's heavy. I don't know. I don't know how to do it. But I can't carry it anymore. Then they will tell you, if you don't mind, I can send you a picture. I mean, it's paining me. And there is something itching. And they start with that. They start with that. And even though your attention doesn't go there as a man of God or maybe a minister, you know, oh, my sister, I mean, let me pray for you. You know, God gave you the size you need. Don't go and do a surgery. I pray for you. They will still insist. And then they will tell you. They will come back again. Say, uh, I feel lonely. I'm always alone. They start with that. This weather is very cold. I cannot sleep all by myself. And then they even go deeper. And begin to tell you their sexual life. Now, don't fall for these things. Because some of them can even tell you that their ex is still calling them. That they don't know why their ex is still calling them. And then they will tell you, probably because I was good in bed. So he can't get over it. They put things to attract you, to call you in. And then they start initiating all these things. They initiated. Their purpose in there is to trap you in. They are there to trap you in. If they can trap you in, any means, anyhow, they can trap you in. They start. And there are things they will say. 
you can't imagine when you are preaching what I what I think. You can't imagine this. You can't imagine. I'm so sorry if I if I go beyond boundary. Please, I'm so sorry, but you know I can't hide my feelings. You know your your lip, the way you you move your lip. I can't imagine. I can't imagine. I, I can just. I'm so sorry. And then they do things like when you sweat, when you are preaching and you are sweating. Oh God, I just feel like nasty touching the sweat that's how nasty they are and then they 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 have the strength to even come and tell you that at a time they cannot sleep this is what they do and this is how they do it please i want to tell you this they don't have that problem they cannot come and tell you i want to have sex with you they cannot come and tell you that um, I feel for you, but they would do every key that would turn your sexual desire up. And let me let me tell you something. Um, um, Facebook, if I get disconnected, I'm going to come back because, Prof, can you help me with that? There is one phone inside there. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah. Or oh, oh, charger. Oh, yeah, 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 there should be a charger around here. Um, yeah, UK is not like Canada. Yeah, as for Canada, we have some chargers that can connect. UK is not like that. UK is not like that. UK, UK people don't have any better thing here. People don't have any better thing here in UK. Oh, the court, the court, the court, the court. You don't have, you don't have, you don't have. Oh, I can use the iPad. Oh, yeah. How? Uh, no. Please, yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> How do I do it? I just put it here. Let me put here your voice. Let me put here your voice. Prophet Edmund, come here, please. Let me put here your voice. Now, can you imagine what Prophet Edmund said? He said, I should put this here. Eh? The reason I'm laughing is because I should put this thing here and then connect it. But this one is big. It cannot go to my iPhone. It doesn't connect to my iPhone. So I don't know what Prophet Edmund... <laughs> okay, funny. All right, all right. Listen. <laughs> There should be a power bank. Power bank, power bank, power bank, power bank, power bank. Okay. I don't even know where the power bank is. Are you guys learning something? Okay. 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 So, Prof. people around you prof you went to school you, you okay you told me that you used to teach in london right you told me you used to teach in london you told me you used to teach in london you come and spend this English. Command your money. The <laughs> people around you. Spend English. Uh, you have to use the uh, apostrophe or the comma or whatever you will call it. Yeah. You will use it there. <laughs> come and say hello to the people. Hey, Prophet Ibas is here. Look at him. <laughs> Prophet, come and say hello. Why? Have you got it? Have you taken somebody's money? Why are you hiding out? No, 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 no. You have been hiding from this one for a long time. What's wrong with you? <laughs> hey, hello everybody. God bless you. God bless you. You know this man, he's a he's, he's the most funniest person you can <laughs> Okay, listen. <laughs> At Facebook, I don't like it. Cry. Now that I hit a high number, the phone is going to go off. Where, where's the battery? 
the battery is not working on but it's okay i can use this if it goes off i will just come on that now what do you use here what what do you use here you say you went to school <laughs> <laughs> you went to school. What do you use? Is it comma or uh, 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 what, do you want? what do you want to write? A comma, a, yeah, you command your money. Just yeah. add the people around you. Write it. The people around you. <laughs> write the people around you. Okay. Praise God. So uh, it's gone. Of course, Facebook. This phone is very disappointing. <laughs> this phone. I just dash it somewhere. This phone. Hey Timothy, I miss you. Praise God. Me, I didn't teach him that I can write quicker. You didn't do what said you Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so Casio. So I'm Casio. Yaba. Yeah, Amen. So it's very, very vital, very, very important that we we understand that in ministry we have all kind of people around us. All kind of people. The midwives. And one of the challenges we have in the church are people who don't know where their authority ends. They don't know where their authority ends. And they keep on trying to impose. And what you do in ministry is important. And please, ministerial ethics are key. They are key. Ministerial ethics are key for fulfillment. Please hear this. So there are people who come to the church like that. Their aim is to frustrate what God is doing, is to bring the man of God down. That's their purpose, is to bring him down. I want to sleep with him. I want to have sex with him. I want to bring him down. That is their mindset. They come. And they don't do it right away. They don't do it right away. It can take them three years, four years, five years before they implement that. And it's a program. The devil makes it as a program for them. And the thing is a desire in their hearts. And they will still do it. And there are some of them who just only come there, not only because they want to have sex. Also, they come in there because their interest is just to be part of it. They are not there to, to contribute anything, but they are only there to create problems. They are in the church, they don't leave, but they cause people to leave the church. They have, they, have, they have been demonically programmed. They are demonic, they are diabolic, they are dangerous, they have strong spirit of scattering people. That is their desire of being in the church. And then we have another set of people who their purpose and their aim of being in the church is just so that they can just make sure that whatever you start, they will undermine it. Or they will either hold it. They will make sure that they undermine it. They will make sure that they will they will make sure that they will, you will not progress. So any step you want to take, they bring you to the past. Hey, we started like this. Let's stay like this. They don't believe in growth. They don't believe in expansion. They don't believe in any any kind of great things. Now watch this. How do you survive when you have people like this in your life? You have people like this in your life. The first thing to do never ignore such people never ignore such people don't ignore them listen confront them attack them sack them confront them attack them sack them regardless of who they are look look one day i told a man of god something a man of God, one man of God, I told him something. I said, though family is important, do not let your family interrupt the mission of God for your life. Because my wife cannot preach through me. My wife cannot send me to go and preach. 
I cannot preach through my wife. I'm not the Holy Ghost. I cannot use my wife in the pulpit. It can never happen. So there is no way my wife should allow me to stop her or destroy the church. If you are a pastor's wife and you are destroying the church, you should be very careful. And if you are a pastor and you are destroying the church, you should be very careful. As for me, what I believe is that anytime God puts a ministry in you, sometimes we always believe that our ministries, we should do it together, which, is a, which I believe is a great thing. But the point is that you cannot be a distraction to the things that God is doing. This man of God, I told him, I told the man of God, I said, this woman you are going to marry, it will frustrate your church. This woman you are going to marry, it will kill your church. The person look at me and say, man of God, you know, um, I like this person and um, I, I'm really confused. As a, at a time, he confided in me and said, prophet, I don't know what I'm doing is true. Somewhere in some country, somewhere, the guy went into ministry. He was doing well until the lady arrived. The lady scattered everybody in the church. Scattered everybody in the church. And I said, I said, do you know that what took you years to build, you cannot build it again in a short time. Why? Because there are people who are sent into our life. Listen, can I tell you, like Catherine Coma, doing very well until a man set in, took him from America, took her from America, brought her to England, shut her in a room. Four women, great women, what destroyed their ministry was, was marriage. Was marriage. Marriage is a good thing. But young men who are going to enter into ministry, be careful who you marry. Be careful who you bring on board. Look, if your wife is not a preacher, don't force her to preach. Don't go and look at Mama Juan and look at other ministers and say, my wife, she would damage the puppet. If your wife is not a preacher, leave her and let her cook. When you finish preaching, you come and eat. Don't force your wife in the puppet. And especially women who are not involved in the church. When they're going to marry a woman and the woman is not involved in the church. The woman is not involved. She doesn't like anything about church. Don't ever think she will be a great asset to you in the ministry. She will hate the ministry. Anytime you are going to church will be a thorn in your flesh. She will hate you talking to anybody in the church because she's not interested in the church. Do not think you will put her in the ministry. When you marry her, she will change her mind. It will be worse. She own you now. She can't share you. That's very important. And most of us women who are already in ministry, these men around us, I know a lady in Spain, dynamic woman, dynamic. Dynamic. I'm not that close to a lot of women who are in ministry, but that lady is a dynamic woman. She will come to me and say to me, Papa, what do I do? How do I do it? When she married, the day she married, that was the day her ministry started going down. Because the guy who is not a preacher now started preaching. And of course, every woman, who, most women will do that. Oh, you are my husband, so go and talk. My dear, the puppet is not a family altar. The puppet is not a family possession. The puppet is a single calling given to an individual to take care of the souls of the people. This puppet is not human management. It is a soul management. So, if, if, if the one you are going to marry is very important, I will come down. I'm come, I will come down. I will come down. Number one, make sure that there is a clear picture, clear line between you and your wife. Clear line. The line should be very clear. My dear, church is church. That doesn't mean you are choosing the members over her or over him. No. It means that this work is what I am called to do. This is what I am passionate to do. This is it. Clear line. Clear. Clear. I am open for advice. I am open for advice, but don't interrupt what God is doing. And that is what we are having in America now. A lot of them call themselves apostles. They don't have anything, nothing. They have no content. 
No content. Look, you can preach in your room. That is fine. Preach in your bedroom. That is okay. But to preach in the pulpit is a different thing. And to preach on Facebook and social media is, is a continental thing. Somebody is in Asia watching me right now. Somebody just messaged me. He is in India. Somebody is in Africa. Somebody is a continental thing. If you don't have a content, don't touch the continent. And there are many people who don't have content. They have nothing. The pulpit is not a function show where we go and dress and stand in there. If you have nothing to say, shut up and sit down. It's very important. Because we have surrounded ourselves. And most of you people who are always in the church, you know that your pastor didn't preach anything. Your pastor didn't preach anything. The wife doesn't know how to preach. You people, you are very good though. You these church members. You are the people who lead us to hell. You people. You people. You know that pastor didn't say anything. The wife is horrible. Ah, mama. Mama, you are doing well. It's a lie. God will punish you for that. Those people who are walking around us who are not faithful. God will punish you. He will punish you. He will not let you go free. I'm telling you, if we don't preach well, let us know we don't preach well. If we don't profess our proper, these days your prophecy is not like before. Tell us straight. Stop hanging around us and we know. We ourselves, when you stand on the puppet, we know that it didn't go well. And you people around us will come out and say, oh, you did very well. You did very God will deal with you. Surround yourself with people who are truthful. Mama, the way today they preach, you know, it didn't go well. I didn't understand. What were you trying to mean? I didn't understand it. Cause them to be conscious of what they are speaking, of what they are saying. Surround yourself with good people. Surround yourself with people who can tell you that what you did was wrong and what you did was right. Surround yourself with good people. Are you hearing me? So if that goes for people who want to marry and those who are in, already married, sit there and say, hey, 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 the puppet is not a place of joke. Tell your sons and your daughters. That is what Eli, his sons went to do and he died. His sons brought trouble. They slept with the women in the church. In the church. They slept with the women in the church. They offered wrong sacrifice. And God saw it and got angry. And God killed them. And killed the father on top of it. So be careful. Your sons and your daughters. Most of us who our sons and our daughters enter into the pulpit. They can do anything. They can talk to any woman. They can talk to any man. And we are quiet and we are looking at them. The wrath of God can rise in a minute. So we have to be very careful. So you have to draw the line. Draw the line, sit it down. And again, let me say this. Let me say this. Very important that I tell you guys this. Look, the pulpit is not a family affair. And the young men of God and the young pastors and the ministers learn how to address the people. The people are not your servants. They were given to you. They were given to you to take care of them. So you cannot talk to them. Come and sit here. Do this. Hey, come and clean here. You cannot talk like your senior pastor. You are the same level with them. Both of you are the same level. Are you hearing me? It is the same level. So stop talking to them, talking down on people. Stop talking down on people. People around us, stop talking down on people. Look at this as an opportunity given to you. It's not your right to talk anyhow with people. Talk anyhow. Anyhow. Anyhow with people. You talk anyhow. You don't care. You talk anyhow. And because you have been put in a certain position, you are in a certain position and the position because you are a senior pastor of a certain local branch or somewhere. You talk anyhow. Talk with respect. You cannot call anybody, anybody, and tell them they are disrespectful or they are that. No, you cannot. You are not the head pastor. You are not the visionary. Talk, come. Oh, my sister, can we love more? Can there anything we can do better? Don't address people like you are the senior pastor. You are not the visionary. Are you hearing me? It is important. And listen, those of you who are in a church, and most of these things, it happens in many churches. Usher, when somebody roll eyes on Usher, the Usher expect the senior pastor to call the one that roll eyes and come and sit and both of them to talk. As for this ministry, they don't talk. When there's something, you call them, they don't. Hey, listen. When the ministry begin to do the, that foolish gathering, Foolish gathering, it destroys the purpose of the ministry. It destroys the purpose of the ministry. So me, I don't have time when somebody does something and you go and call them, come and sit and let's talk. I don't have time for those foolishness. We don't do kids play. We do church with mature people. You must be mature enough. And listen, hear this. 
this especially pastors their wife they are committed in doing this i want you to call this one i want us to sit down and let's talk to this one are you interested in my husband lady excuse me what do you think your husband have we we don't have anything much like that too is the puppet that has brightened on us is the puppet that has that i mean I, I i saw you talking to my husband and and i've i've heard people who have gone to people in the church and said you you were talking to my husband you love my husband you want my husband your, your husband ain't beautiful like that he, he answer he answer i know your husband is not that it's not that it's not all that mm -mm. it's not all that he's not all that so stop going around thinking somebody wants to take your husband you want him not everybody want him and then we have that spirit that will go right to the people and then text them text them don't limit yourself as a pastor's wife as a minister's wife don't limit yourself approaching people approaching them why approach them stay on top stay stay pro stay classy mama will say stay classy stay on top stay up stay above don't go down. 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 Be a mama. Be the boss. Be the general. Go down. Hey, what do you want from my husband? Why are you always talking to my husband? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I need nothing from your husband. Mm -mm. It makes you, it shows the weakness side of you. The next thing I want to talk about, not everything you call a meeting. Sometimes leave those things and let them go. Can you call a meeting? And especially ministers who call meetings without their senior pastor's approval. Every time you call a meeting. When they are standing, I want everybody to come and see me. You don't talk like that. You don't talk like that. Uh, on behalf of the senior pastor, we want to have a meeting. All of you, can we have a meeting together? And then we want to talk about this. We want to talk about that. We want to talk about this. Do not call a meeting as if you are the owner. Humble. It's very important. Humble. Let me say this. So we have people who have surrounded us a lot that, that have become our downfall, our loopholes, our problems, our troubles. And one of the things we don't consider is sometimes how to, how to, um, how to control those people and some of them are very powerful they have become too powerful that you cannot control too powerful too powerful a little over 20 something years being around god working with him i have found something if you learn how to speak as a steward he will entrust many things in your hands he will entrust many many things in your hands so i encourage you the people around you treat them well i told somebody you know, most of you here, if I was a bank manager, most of you would not be staying here listening to me. Most of you are at work. You left your work. You are watching me at work. Most of you, if I was a bank manager, if I was a minister, a minister of agriculture, or minister of Evans House, you will not listen to me. You will not listen to me. If I was ordinary man, you will not listen to me. Why? Why should you listen to me? It is the grace. So because of that grace, I should humble myself. We didn't have opportunity. Look, it's not by force that somebody have to become your member or your listener. It's not by force. So let us treat people with respect. Treat them with honor. Treat them with grace. I was telling somebody, I don't know if it was yesterday, especially the people who happen to serve us. We don't own you anything. No. We don't owe you anything. All we own you is thank you. Because some of you, we wouldn't have been able to send you to go and buy us food, to go and buy this for us. How? How on earth? We don't pay you, but you go and buy it. You go on your own will. Sometimes you even add your own money and you bring it. So me, if you ask them, those who serve me, if you ask them, if they bring me food and I don't like the food and they want to change it, I say, no, 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 it's okay. Because I, it's like David. He wanted to drink water. He sent them to go and bring the water. And they went. The place he wanted the water was the lightest. You know, water has different tastes. The place where David sent them was the lightest water. It was light and sweet. But when they brought the water, you look at the water, you saw the blood. When I look at the food that people fed for me, the people give to me after my service, I just look at their sweat. I look at their destiny. I look at their life. And I don't take it for granted. So I can't get angry. I can't. 
even though I don't like it. I just take the thing and put it back and thank them for the food and then leave. So we have to respect ourselves. Now let me leave this thing with you before we leave and go. Okay, let me leave this thing with you. God has a mission for you and his mission has been programmed connecting to your life. Treat everybody well. The people around you, treat them well. But also, there are some people you have to let them go. Look at them and say bye-bye to them. Let them go. Let them go. There are some people, let them go. I don't believe in divorce. I don't believe in divorce. I don't believe in divorce. Do you believe in separation? Well, I don't believe. I believe in quietness. I believe in quietness. But there are some people in your life, if they are in your life and they are not contributing anything to you, let them go. Because they will occupy a space that belongs to somebody whom God have decided to bring into your life to change your life. So listen, there are some people, let them go. The usher leader, the singer's leader, the protocols, those people in, in position that you know that there are problems, let them go. Let them go. Let them go. Let them go. You know, and again, um, that's a good question, my daughter. Um, what if the people tells you to forgive them? Well, it is, it is okay. But let me tell you something. Anybody who have hurt you once have the ability to help you the second time. And the first one may be a mark, but the second one will be a wound. Make sure that you don't entertain Judas. Jesus could have saved Judas, but he made him die. So make sure you don't entertain Judas. I told you, there are some people, three type of people, you don't entertain them. You cannot be more than Jesus. You cannot be more than Jesus. Don't try to be more than Jesus. You cannot. You cannot be more than Jesus. Number one, people who don't want you to reign. Luke chapter 19, 21. Bring them and slay them. Cast them out. People who don't want you to reign in life, throw them. Let them go. Number two, people who gossip you. They gossip you and they act as if they like you. They gossip you and they act as if they like you. It was through gossip that Jesus was persecuted and crucified. Those who gossip you, let them leave. Call them and let them leave. If they have been good to you, bless them and let them leave. If they have not been good to you and they have caused many damage to you, call them, let them know what they have done and then say bye-bye to them. When they give you often, refuse it. When they give you tight, refuse it. Let them go. And the third type of people in your life, people who comes into your ministry and they want to break their ministry, they want to break out, they want to go form their own ministry, call them quick. Dissolve them. Let them go. The best way to do this, if, if you are a man of God, the best way to do this, always have a secret backup for ushers, secret backup for singers, secret backup for protocols, secret backup for other departments. Don't let anybody know them. These people are secret. They are hidden. So if any department misbehave, dissolve it, pam, the other ten set in.